This portion of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited, fueling growth for people. It was quite a feat to accomplish, but Marathon Bahamas 2014 is now history and has been branded a huge success. The 26.2 mile international marathon and half marathon, <laughs> which is now in its fifth year, began at 6 o'clock this morning at the oceanfront on Jokanu Beach and ended at Arawaki and is expected to be completed in six and a half hours. Sunshine Insurance Limited is the leading sponsor and its chairman Franklin Wilson was on hand to greet the marathoners but was very encouraged by the boost the international event gives our tourism industry. Our idea was to always keep this thing at very high standards. Don't care what. The consistent thing that people are saying, this is very well organized. Once we do that, and people get this thing, but I'm coming back, I'm telling a friend, and so on and so forth. With ESPN now, and, 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 and some other international press here, we'll get to a tipping point where instead of growing 1%, 2%, we want to start growing 5 10 20%. And we think it's a realistic chance. Marathon Bahamas attracts runners from right here at home, 25 countries and 31 states. Most of them we spoke with are confident they completed their personal best. We were looking to do a marathon at this time of the year in a beautiful place. And that's how we found it on active.com. Will you be back uh, next year and the year after and the year after? Definitely. What was the most hardest, uh, difficult part of the course? Um, I think just the endurance part, just the whole mental game of it. You guys look like you're ready to run again. like you We said. are, we are. We're running for our mama. The bridge over to Paradise Island is always a good challenge. Uh, luckily, it's, you know, at that beginning. Um, and then once you get out here by the ocean and it starts, you know, sun starts coming up, it's, uh, it's a really nice course. I just started a Facebook page that says Bahamas Runcation, and then all of my friends just joined. And so initially there was over 200 people who joined the page. And I think we brought over 45 folks with us. Where we live, it's just cornfields and farmland. So here to see the ocean and see cruise ships and a bunch of neat trees and plants, oh, there's kind of a fun course to run. How it feels uh, being the place uh, being in the crossover? It feels feel great because last year, Corley, Corley beat me, Sydney Corley beat me, and I tell him I'm coming back from this. Mr. Earl Bodie, yes, my coach, he died. And I really did it for him. All in all, I break my, my time because I did it for 156 a couple of years ago. And I break it this time, I did like about one, 153. I think I was in the top 10 in the, in the Masters. So it was, it was a, great, a great race this morning. You know what a rat is, right? When you're in school, someone hit your arm and then the rat run up. The rat run from my ankle straight up to my hamstring. So I had to stop once or twice, but I still did a personal best of 150 or 152, I think it was. That bridge was a little bit tough out there, and two of them, come on! Come on! But it was a great run. The race looked like fun. Well, with just days left until the 42nd annual Red Cross Ball, officials from the Bahamas Red Cross Society are issuing a final appeal tonight for members of the public to purchase tickets for the most important event of the organization's fundraising calendar. Three platinum tables and two regular tables are up for grabs at the event themed Rhapsody in Blue, which will be held at the Malia Nassau Beach Resort on Saturday, January 25th. Proceeds from the annual fundraiser have fallen over the years, but the organization has set a fundraising target of $100,000. Director General Carolyn Turnquest pointed out that the money is earmarked for initi initiatives such as the Meals on Wheels and after school programs, CPR and first aid training, in addition to other operational expenses. Board, uh, very much um, needed assistance for those among us who are challenged at this particular time in terms of, of meeting their particular needs, their individual needs. We are also here in any disaster. We were fortunate last year not to have a, a hurricane. We don't know what this year will bring. And so we want to be prepared to ensure that we are there to take care of persons in the event of any disaster. Co-chair of the ball, Bernadette Bunch, says those who attend can look forward to a fun-filled evening. We have a fantastic evening lined up for everyone in attendance. We have the police pop band during the cocktail hours. We have the um, Lou Adams Orchestra for dinner, followed by Harold Melvin's Blue Notes. They promise us a fantastic show. We're going to go back in the day, bring back all those good old uh, music. Um, anybody interested in attending the ball, please feel free to call the Bahamas Red Cross headquarters for tickets 
323-7370. Well, a new read hit bookshelves across the capital today. Veteran weather forecaster Wayne Neely has published his eight book titled The Great Bahamas Hurricane of 1929. The Category 4 storm was one of the biggest weather systems to hit Nassau. Mr. Neely says this hurricane had a massive impact on the sponging industry in the Bahamas and told us what inspired him to document history. Well, I read these books not because, because the average behemoth doesn't know about the storms and the impact that they had on the behemoth society at the time. For example, in the 1929 hurricane, 134 behemoths died in that storm. A book that I recall, The Great Hurricane of 1866, 386 behemoths in the 1934 hurricane, 334 uh, persons died in that storm and hundreds of persons died and the behemoth history books don't seem to reflect that damage and, and the, hur the hurricane book that I'm working, working on now is called the Great Lake Okeechobee Hurricane. 1034 behemoths died in that storm and the average history books doesn't reflect and doesn't record this so it's my job as a meteorologist and as an archivist to document these storms. Well, that does it for this portion of the news. Stay tuned. Julian Gibson is up next with sports.